Hello, welcome back. And we're gonna look at another video of me doing some driving in reality. And if you have seen the other ones, this one's gonna be a bit different because those were qualifying. This is gonna be a race and that might excite you. So it's actually at Donington Park from last year's British GT campaign in 2020, my debut season. And you'll see throughout the video, it doesn't go too well. I don't wanna spoil it, but it's not great. And those things are exactly what we're going to focus on. What didn't go well? Why didn't it go well? Because as a season, the things that didn't go well in this video were the theme as to why we didn't win in our debut season. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting video. Um, that's enough waffle. Let's get into it and see what exactly went wrong. And so we're on the grid quite far back. And that is because Michael in the pro session of qualifying set a time that was it was only six tenths off the pole but it was so close it's savagely close in the pro qualifying such good drivers that we resulted in being ninth or tenth or whatever and the reason i'm starting the race with the pros is because in quali the day before i set a 27-0 michael set a 27-2 so because i did the faster time i'm therefore out with the pros it's just the way british gt do their ruling so my fourth race start, my second in the wet, because the first race of the day was wet, although I didn't start that. So this is my first ever race start in the wet. And uh, the second meeting at Donington Park, I think at this point we were leading the championship. So we need to salvage some points. And uh, you can see it's damp, it's intermediate, it's not fully wet, but still it's challenging conditions a little bit like Imola last weekend on the F1 you know very very slippy and you can go from hero to zero very very quickly so we're doing everything we can to get heat into the brakes and the tires as much as possible but looking back now that's one weakness I, I do immediately see is we're not doing that enough we're in quite a high gear we're not being very aggressive with the steering we're being quite tentative on the throttle and the brakes so we could be doing more in that area but Hindsight's a beautiful thing when you when you do the best in the moment with the experience you've got, and that's what I did. But yeah, it's, you cut, there's no there's no um, replacement for experience. There's just not. So you, later on in the year at Snetterton, when it was also wet, it was much improved. And uh, British GT in 2020, there was nine races. Four of out four out of nine were wet. So almost half of the calendar was wet and uh, you'll see throughout the race what the issue with us as a package myself the car why we weren't as strong as we were in the wet compared to the dry because in the dry we were doing poles wins podiums but in the wet it just all went down the toilet really <laughs> no other way to say it but you can see we're coming up to the final corner <clears throat> and once we go around the final corner rolling start into turn one and the racing will begin so I'm just fully focusing on not or making sure I don't miss the start. The leader's already around the corner. As we're really close behind the McLaren in front. Waiting for those lights. Or I don't really think I can see the lights, but I'm looking for the cars and the, the lights go out. Go, go, go. As we go into turn one. Get the Lamborghini on the left. Brake a little bit early so we don't cause a massive pile up. That would be a way to make a name for yourself. Into turn one. Make contact with the Mercedes slightly on the exit. Phil Keen and the Lamborghini cuts us off. And then we do actually go around the outside of Phil Keen down the Craner Curve. So at this point in time, I'm thinking, this is my like Senna moment. This is the, the drive of my life. What a start. I felt comfortable. And the reason, well, not the sole reason, but the main reason was... I, it was a bit, there was the difference in tyre strategies between each team. So I was out in the wet and other teams, or the majority of the cars on the grid were out on the slick. So I think there was two or three cars out on the wet and then everyone else was out on the slick. So the people on the wet, including me, had a bit of a tyre advantage at the start because it was damp and you can't fire up a slick straight away in terms of the heat. So you're going to have a bit of a tyre advantage and you just have more heat in your tyres if you're running a wet. So in this early phase of the race, we look really strong, comfortable. I'm thinking, I'm out with the pros. What's going on? How am I catching people and passing people like in my first race start in the wet? But it was obviously because of the tyre advantage. And uh, 
yeah, you soon see it does backfire quite heavily, to be fair. So we're right up, up behind the McLaren of Joe Osborne, McLaren factory driver. So, again, confidence is really high. I'm just buzzing. I'm like, this this is amazing. This is awesome. I don't know what I'm doing right, but let's keep doing it. And you'll soon see it doesn't last forever. <laughs> um, and it's annoying because I, the reason I... I titled the video the way I did is because we went into the final round of British GT with a really outside chance of winning the championship but ultimately we were only 20 points or so off the lead and we lost so many points in the four races where it was wet. We lost I want to say like 50 points or something so we could have if, if, if the calendar was dry I'm pretty sure we would have won a title but that's a ridiculous thing to say you know it's wet for everyone it's dry for everyone you've got to do the best with what you have you've got to make sure your lows are not that low be consistent and we didn't we we had too many dips when it rained and the reasons for that i mean myself lack of experience in the wet the car the team it was a new car for the team the mclaren so we didn't do any testing as outside of the british gt weekends we did no testing and uh that's why there was a fundamental lack of understanding from myself, maybe from the team as well, because you'll see throughout the race, the balance goes a bit weird, and that's because the car is just too stiff for the wet conditions. And the Merc goes up the inside of the hairpin. We can't really do anything about that, and I'm just going to go with him. So at this point in the race, we're not as quick as we were at the start, and it starts to plateau in terms of the gap to the guys in front. And you'll see over the course of the next lap, it just gets, it gets worse and worse. I've gone forward with the brake bias because I've already started to identify that the balance is going a bit rearward, so it's going a bit oversteery, but I thought a little tweak with the brake, with the brake bias might sort that out. I don't know what's about to happen in terms of the, uh, the downfall we're about to have happen to us in terms of our pace, but uh, I do start to notice that I'm getting less grip. It's starting to get a bit twitchy, a bit oversteery, and... I think that's because the wets are just overheating at this point. You know, it's not that wet. I'm not helping myself. I'm not driving around the issues. I'm not looking for wet patches to cool the wets down. I'm not loading the front of the suspension up before I turn into a corner to stop it oversteering. Because when you oversteer, not only have you lost time in the oversteer moment, you've heated up the rear tires. So when you go into the next corner, it's worse. So it just keeps on, the, the issue compounds itself and gets worse and worse and worse. So the Merc there of Kajala goes up the inside and then gets us on the straight. Defends, I was never going to go back up the inside. I'm starting to identify now something is clearly wrong because I've, I've lost like three or four seconds to the guys in front in one lap, which is just mental. I mean, to this point, you know, think about it. I won the first race. We came away from Alton Park leading the championship, polled it the day before in round two, and then this happens, and I'm like, what is going on? We're just getting annihilated and it's such a you know when you've had the high of the wind and the pole and then for this to happen it's like it's such a very it's a it's a depressing feeling and with all the variables that are going on right now with the the wrong tire choice and there is a guy up front in the mclaren with the wet tire but he he does fall back but not at the same rate we do and that's because he's doing everything to try and get around the issue and we do got the inside slightly there, but there's no point challenging for that position. He's going to pull away in a minute anyway. And yeah, there's so many variables, but when you have on top of the variables, when you have the mental state of the driver, me in this case, where I'm just, it's so hard not to over push because there's a, there's a voice in your head that goes, right, everyone's pulling away. What can you do to solve the situation? Why are you so slow? You, you think of everything logical, that you're doing wrong but then it gets to a point where you don't know anymore and you're like maybe I just need to push harder maybe I need to just brake later get on the power earlier steer more aggressively use different gears and you see Phil King eventually gets back up towards us and overtakes us going into the chicane so I don't know what happened to him at the start he must have fallen back quite a lot and uh, there's, a, there's still a couple of GT3 cars behind us that are uh, yet to pass us yet and you'll see that over the course of the stint but yeah, you just start over pushing and you can see there we're just oversteering absolutely everywhere, especially in the slow corners. But 
to, to refrain yourself from pushing or not pushing that 5 or 10% too much in the wrong moment where you throw it off, go on the grass, hit a barrier, hit another car. I mean, that is the worst thing you could do as a driver in, in real life. There's nothing worse than crashing. And I know the race didn't go too well, but if I crashed, if I let the situation get on top of me and threw it off, the team would have, they would have seen me in a different light. I'm pretty sure, you know, there's no two ways about it. There'd be, lack of, there'd be a lack of respect going into the next round. Me mentally, I'd lack a bit of confidence going into the next round. It's the worst possible thing to crash. And I tried to keep that at the forefront of my mind. You can see there a McLaren on the right that's spun off. But it's hard, not, it's like an internal battle with yourself whilst driving round. Like, push harder, don't go off. Push harder, don't go off. And yeah, I think with experience, you, you, I would have known, look, this is going to be an uphill battle anyway. I'm on the wrong tyre, the setup's not there. Let's just drive around the issue, get to the, the pit stop, no worries. But yeah, when you're new, you want to prove yourself, you got a limited chance or limited an hour, a limited amount of races to prove yourself in a championship. You want to do everything you can to impress. And yeah, when I see, basically I'm watching my dream go away, it's not a nice feeling. It really isn't, and it's embarrassing because I know I remember my family were there. I'll show you in a minute because they're on the hill. My girlfriend's family were there. I had a couple of mates there as well. I mean, there's other people as well. So you want to impress everyone that's watching, and when they're seeing this. It's embarrassing, it's just you think, you, you don't know what to think, but it's a horrible feeling. The worst feeling for me anyway that I can ever have. Because, um, you know, when you think it's the only thing you're good at and you're getting embarrassed in front of everyone else. Not a nice feeling. So going into turn one, we're trying, we're experimenting with the lines. and It's a learning experience. It's worth saying that. You know, you come out of this race, and I did, with a lot more information in my head as to what I should do in certain scenarios. Going down Craner Curves, we're completely driving the car on the rear now. You can see it's just, it's, at the start it was perfect, the balance was perfect, but now it's just like twitching absolutely everywhere. The hill there, right on the crest, that's where all my family and that were. So they could only see me go up the hill really, and they were probably thinking, why is he so slow? I'm losing like two, three seconds every lap to the lead cars. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's quite clear to see from the onboard where we were losing that time, just from a lack of grip, basically, and shedding time in where the car's sliding, we're waiting to get on the power, we can't break as late as everyone else. It, that's what happens when you have a lack of grip. And the, the thing is, when I say there was four wet races, in the final wet race of Snetterton, we did crack the code. We figured out what we were doing wrong um, with the setup, with my driving. Like, I look at it now and I'm thinking, you know, there's certain things with the braking, with the steering, with... And the setup is crucial, don't get me wrong, but the driving could have been better. And, uh, you know, one day I might post a Snetterton on board on this channel as well. You can see that we let the Lamborghini go there. I think for a couple of corners, he was right up in my, our mirror. And I was just... I had so much going on in my head. I was like, let's just let him go. We might learn something if we stick behind him. And unfortunately, he's too quick for a for us to actually learn anything so he doesn't just pull away but that's alright um, and at Snetterton yeah it was good we were one of, I think when I was on track in the second half of the race albeit it was with the AMs and the slower silvers but we were the quickest car on track by quite a margin so I think if we had that experience and that performance in this race we would have been at the front I think so it doesn't rain, you can clearly see we're not having a Marcus Winkelhock Nürburgring 2007 moment, unfortunately, but in the second half of the race, when we make the pit stop, we go on the slick, Michael O'Brien goes out, and he's, I think he turns out to be the fastest car on track, so we have the pace in the dry, we just didn't know what to do in the wet to start with, and eventually we did, but by that point, that was round eight of the championship, the Snetterton thing I'm on about, and you got one race left, and that's it. So that's why you need to test. You need to get all these little issues and things of comfort and performance on the setup and performance in my driving out the way in the testing. So when it comes to the, the championship, the all important races in the championship, you're ready and you can deliver and you can get the points. 
And it, you know, that's no one's fault. That's not the team's fault. That's not my fault. That's not the sponsor's fault. You know, world's fastest gamer. It's just the way it is. Motorsport, co motorsport costs a lot of money. And if you don't have the money to go testing, you don't have the money to go testing. And I think we did the best job we could, given the tools we were given, to do uh, a good job. I mean, there were down, you know, there were low moments like this, but that's part of it. So the McLaren there goes up the inside of the final corner. And that is the final GT3 to pass us as well. So we're in the GT3 pack, stone dead last, which is the worst place to be really, isn't it? And if you've noticed, over the course of the stint, I've gone forward with the brake bias more and more to basically counteract the, the rear instability I'm getting everywhere, mid-corner, entry, exit. But when it's such a core issue like you're seeing right now, and it's clear, like the suspension's too stiff, the rear tyres are overheating, it's, cr it's just out of control, basically. A brake bias adjustment will not fix that. It might help it a fraction, but it's not going to help it. You know, it's not going to solve it, sorry. And uh, that is just how it is. But, you know, at least we're thinking sort of in intuitively in the moment. We're, we're trying to do something about it. We're not completely losing our mind. Although I'm I, looking, looking back now, I'm surprised I kept as cool as I did and didn't throw it off. Because it's, it's so easy to. Like, you just try and push that a little bit too hard. I've, I've basically accepted at this point I'm the slowest car on the track. Let's just get it home as quick as I can, albeit it's quite slow. Get Michael in the car, let him do his stuff, and I'll figure out what I'm doing wrong. But, yeah, I look back at it now, it must have been so frustrating. It was frustrating, thinking about it, but it, it, it just is what it is. Going into the final corner. I think this was the theme for the rest of the stint, really, was just... Frustration. The track got drier. The tyres got more hot the balance got worse my driving got more frustrated and more aggressive and more mistakes were made so that is the theme of it but i think we'll cut to the final lap of the stim which is about 10 minutes away and just before michael gets in the car and we'll see what the balance is like then and let's see how we ended the stint and as we approach the final corner then, on the final lap of the stint, going into the final corner, we've already engaged the pit speed limiter to basically prepare ourselves. The pit speed limiter engages when you go below 50 kilometers an hour, and we go to 49 kilometers an hour on the final corner, and it engages before we even get into the pit lane, all the way back there. And you can see we're so frustrated with everything, with the stint, that little mistake with the pit speed limiter in the final corner. But we've got to focus up, we've got to fix up going into the pit stop, make sure we get Michael in the car as quick as possible so we can get some points. And we did salvage a couple of points. Michael did a really good job on the slicks to get, get us back in the race. And that was that. So that was one of the most frustrating periods or 20, 30 minute periods of my entire life. And you've just witnessed it. Horrible to watch it back because I know I'm so much better than that. But it is what it is. You know, you dealt the cards you dealt and you try to do the best with what you've got. And we did do the best with what we got, to be honest, at the time. In the wet, in karting and on the sim, I was always, to be honest, better in the wet than I was in the dry. So having that reality kind of thrown at you was horrible. Absolutely horrible, but that's racing. You know, you can't have ups and success and wins and poles and whatever without the lows because when, the thing is with the lows, you learn a lot from it. On the sim, in reality, even away from racing, anything you do, if you have the lows, you're gonna learn from it. And we did. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed my misery. For 20 minutes and if you did give it a thumbs up and yeah sub up to the channel there will be more stuff like this i could maybe show you the snetterton wet race where we did crack it in terms of the setup and my driving that might be a quite an interesting comparison to show you but anyway that is it from me today i hope you enjoyed the video and until the next one i'll see you soon